Syria considers the American administration responsible for foiling the Convention of Geneva Conference about Syria. Units of the Syrian army restore security and stability to Al Aziziyah and Chesteros in Aleppo countryside. And dozens of Iraqi victims are killed and wounded in three terrorist attacks targeting the towns of Saladin, Ninawa, and Al Musil. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Art Television in Damascus. Vice Foreign Minister Dr. Faisal al asserted that Syria gives a great importance to the humanitarian cases and the social circumstances of the Syrian citizens. In a press conference, Mahdad stressed that the West made sanctions against the Syrian citizens in support of others like Al Saud regime. The Deputy Foreign Minister added that Turkey is playing a destructive role in Syria through allowing terrorists to be trained and infiltrated into the Syrian territories. al Mahdad added that the Syrian government is committed to reconstructing what has been destroyed by the terrorist groups, saying that the Syrian citizens who are suffering from the embargo imposed on them are holding the United States and the West the responsibility of the daily repercussions and suffering. The Vice Foreign Minister thanked the countries that supported Syria with humanitarian aid like Russia, Iran and China, pointing out that France, Turkey and the Saudi government, instead of giving support to the Syrian citizens, gave weapons to the terrorists fighting in Syria. And Mahdad also said that the international humanitarian law pointed to the necessity of respecting the sovereignty of countries. And Mahdad added that in Syria we have a, a high commission for relief that works in cooperation with the Syrian Red Crescent. The, the Vice Foreign Minister stressed that the terrorist groups stole the aid convoys that were coming to the Syrian citizens in need. He also said that the Syrian government first priority is to give the aid to the citizens as the government is committed to give the vaccinations, for example, for each Syrian child wherever they are. Syria considered the American administration responsible for foiling the Convention of the Geneva Conference about Syria. An official source in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the American Foreign Secretary John Kerry continued to give statements leading to the failure of the conference and intervention in Syria's internal affairs. This is a violation of the Syrian people's right to determine their future. The source added that if the U.S. is truthful in its cooperation with Russia in sponsoring the Geneva Conference, then Kerry should understand that only the Syrian people have the right to elect their leadership and to determine their political future without any foreign intervention. In a unit of the Syrian Armed Forces clashed with a terrorist gang in al Manshiya quarter, killing and wounding many terrorists. During their chase of terrorist gangs in the village of Ataman, units of the Syrian army killed and wounded several of them, including the Egyptian Tariq Hani and Shadi Awanjum. In Wal Lajat, another army unit clashed with terrorists near the bridge of the village of Wardat, killing and wounding several of them. Units of the Syrian Arab Army restored security and stability to the village of Al Aziziyah, killing and wounding many terrorists in several towns and villages in the countryside of both Aleppo and Idlib. Units of the army carried out a flash operation that lasted for 48 hours against terrorist hideouts and groups to the north of Sfira in the southeastern countryside of Aleppo city. The remaining terrorists are being currently chased away from the nearby village of Talaran. The Syrian Arab Army units destroyed terrorist groups' hideouts in Tal Arna, which is located between Al Aziziyah and Al Sfira. A military source said that the Syrian Arab Army units eliminated terrorists to the western and northern sides of Benyamin area near the glass factory Castello Ziara, around the central prison of Aleppo and the surroundings of Al Kindi Hospital. Meanwhile, other units destroyed missile launching pads, mortar cannons, and terrorist hideouts in the villages of Ejdede and Aquarius. The source pointed out that the army units eliminated armed terrorist groups, members in the village of Ain Ejmama, and the army also destroyed two vehicles with weapons and terrorists inside on the road of Al Bab Aleppo.
In line with combating terrorism and its financiers, the United Nations team of experts continued its operations in Syria and toured one of the positions to review the contents of chemical weapons within the context of cooperation with Syria to destroy these weapons according to the agreement between the Syrian government and the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OBCW. The team carried out the measures to close and seal those locations. The coordinator of the joint team, Mr. Zigrid Kag, asserted that Syria was fully cooperating with the inspectors. She thanked the Syrian people and government for this true cooperation. The experts and all those seeking peace in the region hope that this Syrian attitude would contribute to emptying the region of weapons of mass destruction. The Western media are circulating reports about the desperate attempts of the Saudi family to save its remaining terrorist gangs inside Syria, particularly after the failure of the plotters of war on Syria before the heroism of the Syrian Arab army. The Gulf movement led by the Saudi regime to consolidate military support for the terrorist gangs in Syria were exposed by the Washington Post. The paper asserted that the Saudi regime is seeking to develop its options away from Washington because the Saudi family considers that the U.S. has failed to deal a military blow against Syria. The paper pointed out that Washington and its allies supplied the terrorists with weapons and cooperated with the CIA in training them. However, the Saudi regime planned to expand the training institutions in Jordan and to increase the arming of the opposition. The U.S. Foreign Secretary admitted before the Committee of Foreign Affairs in the American House of Representatives that some Arab countries offered to pay the cost of any military operation. Information reports showed that Saudi regime was urging the U.S. to wage a military aggression on Syria. Erdogan's government is afraid of the spread of terrorism to its own territory. The Turkish paper Hurriyet revealed that explosive devices were found on a ship that arrived in Alexanderun from Egypt. Two people on board were detained and admitted that they intended to carry the explosives into Syria. On the other hand, the co-leader of the Party of Peace and Democracy asserted that Erdogan's government supported fanatic groups and Al-Qaeda in Syria and facilitated the transfer of money and weapons to those terrorist organizations. As for the opening of the two illegal crossing points on the Syrian-Turkish borders, the Turkish paper Yort asserted that the Republican People's Party presented a memorandum about the dangers of these crossing points on the Turkish citizens in the border areas. In Iraq, seven people were killed and more than 20 others injured in three terrorist attacks that targeted officials and policemen in the governorates of Saladin and Nineveh, north of the country. Iraqi police said that the heaviest attack took place in the town of al Shirqat, north of Baghdad, as a booby trap truck hit a police station. Police said that the first blast left no injuries, but two other suicide bombers targeted the policemen who came to inspect the area, killing four people and injuring 12 others. In Tikrit, the center of Saladin governorate, 10 recruits were injured in a car bomb in front of the police academy. In Mosul, three government officials were killed and four others injured in an attack by government carried out by, as part of daily terrorist attacks against security and government officials, including journalists. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianline.sy. Now to the latest in business and market news with Vani Konejian, but after a short break.